Welcome back. Now we've been working with Taylor series for quite some time now, and we're really familiar with the idea that we can use Taylor series to expand out a function in terms of a polynomial. Now we've applied this to the exponential function and the sine and cosine function, and we found that we can represent those in terms of an infinitely long polynomial. Now you may be thinking, well it's pretty cool that we can say that this polynomial converges to, or approximates, or even equals this function, but it's rather difficult to work with something that's infinitely long, if only there was something more convenient. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about approximations using Taylor series. And all of these approximations we're going to talk about are all centered upon the idea that what happens when the value of x is small. What happens when x is small? Now let's first start off by looking at our generic Taylor series expansion. Here it has an x term, and has an x squared term, an x cubed term, and it may even have like an x to the 20th term, etc. But let's see what happens when the value of x is small. So here we have x times some constant. So when x is small, this is just going to be relatively small. Now here we have x squared times a constant. So we have a small number squared, so that's going to be even smaller. So here we have x cubed, that's going to be even smaller. In all these higher order terms, we're raising a small number to like a higher and higher power, which is going to make it smaller and smaller. The end result being is that if x is small enough, all these higher order terms are just so small they're negligible, that we can just forget about them. Now, just to give you a sense of like what I mean, uh, let's just say what happens if like x is equal to 0 0.1. In that case, x squared would be equal to whoops, uh, 0 0.01, x cubed would be equal to 0 0.001, x to the fourth would be equal to 0 0.0001, and all these higher order terms become really, really, really small, so we can just forget about them. Now, let's apply that to some of the Taylor series expansions that we found already. In particular, let's talk about what we like to call the small angle approximation. Basically, applying this x is small thing to our sine and cosine terms. So, when x is small through uh, sine of x, we can neglect all these higher order terms like x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, etc. And we can say that sine of x is approximately equal to x when all when x is small. Now in this case, when we say x is small, we actually mean that in this particular example, when x is less than or up to 0.244 radians, which is about like 15 degrees. Now, this is relatively handy because we, we can represent this trigonometric function in terms of just one term instead of an infinitely long term. Now we can do the same with cosine as well. We can say that cosine of x is approximately equal to all these higher order terms don't really matter, we can just reduce it down to 1 minus x squared over 2. And this is typically true for when x is at up to about 0.664 radians. So either less than or more or less equal to about 38 degrees. Now, we can even apply this to tangent of x. Now we didn't even talk about the Taylor series expansion for tangent of x because it's a relatively messy expansion, but we know that tangent of x is just sine of x over cosine of x. And we can say that this is approximately equal to x for when x is up to about like 0.176 radians, which is about like 10 degrees. So this, this is the small angle approximation, essentially representing trigonometric functions with only a couple terms. Now let's take a look at this graphically. So let's pull up our graphing program. Here I already have sine of x, and let's see how this compares to 
our first order approximation x. So we can see that there's quite a lot of overlap in like, this region right here. Now let's just zoom into that. So if we zoom in, like let's say, whoops, let me just zoom that, zoom that one. Here's our sine of x, graph of sine of x, and here's our graph of x. And they overlap really well in this very, like, in this very narrow region here. Then they start to diverge, like, right after, like, 0.25. So what we can essentially say is that in this narrow region, we can represent the function sine of x with only the, with only the term x, which is fairly handy. And if we zoom out, we can apply this to... We can cosine of x as well. We can say, let's just draw out the cosine of x. And we said that our small angle approximation for that is 1 minus x squared over 2. So here we see that this approximation describes the function pretty well only over this narrow range. And we can zoom in and see. So. Okay, so here we can see like graphically that 1 minus x squared over 2 describes the cosine x pretty well from this small range, well, in the, was in the small range right here. Now, as we know, if we try and go outside that range, the approximation becomes worse and worse, but in that small range, it works in it very nicely. Now, we can even take a look at tangent of x. So let's pull that up, uh, let's take a look at y is equal to tangent of x, and we said that that is approximately equal to x. And we can see that that holds true only for a very, like, very small region of x. Now let's just go back. Now, one way you can think about this small angle approximation is uh, we know that the infinitely long series will describe the entire function well, like sine x and cosine x but if we want to work with like a polynomial that's like smaller and more workable then we can have to like take away some of these terms to make it more convenient and as a result this approximation describes these functions but only over a very narrow region so you can say that these small angle approximations are just a way you can represent these functions only over a very narrow region. But um, one last uh, approximation I want to talk about that isn't exactly a trigonometric approximation is an approximation you can make using the binomial Taylor series expansion in uh, let me, let's just change up here. With the binomial Taylor series expansion, 1 plus x to the p power, when x is small, we can say that this is approximately equal to 1 plus p times x. Essentially saying that we don't really need all these higher order terms with more and more complex binomial coefficients. So it's just like a quick example. Oops. We can say that... The function, uh, we can say 1 over radical 1 plus x. Now, we can rewrite this as just 1 plus x to the negative 1 half. And if x is small, we can rewrite it using our Taylor series approximation. And knowing that p is equal to 1 half, we can say that this is approximately equal to 1 minus x over 2. Now, you may see something like this when, in a couple of proofs, particularly in like statistical mechanics or quantum mechanics, when you know you're working with a ver when we define x in terms of like certain variables that we know are going to be small, and we want to, we usually use this to simplify up like very unusual integrals and make it something much more reasonable to work with. Now, with these approximations, you'll typically see them all the time in like your undergrad physics career. So it's best to really understand where they come from as soon as as early as possible.